Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video I want to take a look at one of the most successful decks I have built for this season, which is the Lifesteal Control Warlock. So if Tempo Rogues are getting you down and Jade Roots are being annoying, then you might just find some kind of an answer with Control Warlock. A Warlock overall has some difficulties against Priest, because if Priest plays his cards right and runs Prophet Well and Mind Blast, the whole combo stuff, then they can actually OTK you from 30. And there's no real answer to that, you can only gain some armor from Blood River Gul'dan, but other than that, OTKs do happen, and that's something you cannot really deal with. But the more aggressive builds, there are some sweet things you can do with this deck. So this build is heavily focused on defense and staying alive. I'm running the Corpse Taker Bloodworm package, so that Corpse Takers will have Taunt, Divine Shield and Life Steal. This package was also run by Amnesiac in Warlock deck that he played to Legend last season, and in that list Amnesiac credited Chucky with the idea of running them in Warlock. But other than that, this is very different from the Lifesteal Warlocks anyone else is playing. So I'm playing a very defensive game. I have Mr. of Mixtures, I have Void Walker, I even have Drain Soul, which is pretty nice. Together with Mortal Coil and Defile, you can set up some really sweet board clears. And Tainted Zealot obviously works in that combo, and Tainted Zealot also gives Divine Shield to the Corpse Taker. Then there's also Stonehill Defenders for even more defense, and it also gives Taunt to the Corpse Taker, in addition to Void Walker giving Taunt, so Corpse Taker is quite reliable in getting that Taunt. Of course, like any slow Warlock deck, I'm running Blood River Cooldown and a Demon package that it will resurrect. In this case, Void Walker, then Despicable Dreadlord, and Abyssal Enforcer. There's a lot of clearing power in this deck, many AoEs, only one copy of Hellfire though. I found that two copies of Hellfire can sometimes be a little bit clunky, I'm opting to run a Spellbreaker in addition to Hellfire here. And in this list I have opted to run as much hard removal as possible. So I have double Siphon Soul, I have double Twisting Nether, and this is really the package that makes it possible to go to the late game, go to the fatigue in addition to Skulking Geist, of course. So against the Jade Druid, for example, Skulking Geist can prevent them from going infinite if they're not able to find a lot of ramp early on and just out-tempo you like that, then you can generally exhaust them, all of their resources, and win the game like that. So overall, this has been one of the most fun decks I have played this season. I really enjoy this slow grinder type of game style. But I have obviously prepared some gameplay for you, so, if you enjoyed this content, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more, and let's go take a look at this deck in action. Let's try with this. Probably a Tempo Rogue, most likely running the Prince. Possibly going to hurt a lot. Let's see. We're about to find out. Motal Coil can allow for some nice Defile Combos if I don't find the Zealot. Drain Soul allows me to kill something. This guy probably has win. Uh, Lifesteal and Divine Shield. Hallucination? Okay, are we talking about Miracle Rogue or are we talking about Tempo Rogue? No, I don't know. Some Tempo Rogues do have Hallucination. We're still talking about Tempo Rogue. Okay. Consider yourself lucky he didn't shadow stuff him. Well, he might still have a Shadow Step in hand. He might not want to use it on Kelaset. It depends on the rest of his hand. I'm just thinking whether I want to leave a 2 health minion on the board. But I think I do. 2 health minion on the board might improve my chances of getting some kind of Defile combos off. That's the dream opener, by the way. Kelaset into Captain Patches. That's as good as it gets. And both of my bloodworms came to hand, so Corpse Taker just lost life still. This sucks a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so I can drain soul the patches and then I can play Defile and it will kill all of these. And I probably need to do that. So I don't think I can afford to take that damage. 
It still looks pretty bad, because that is the dream. Prince into South Sea Captain. That's the best possible opener. Just about. Well, I mean, you can have some super high roll openers. Into a 3-4 Shaku. That's actually really, really good. And this guy doesn't even have lifesteal anymore. It does have divine shield, though. He does have the mana to dagger up, so he can use Shaku to kill it. He has one Warlock card in hand. Too bad that it lost the life steal. I really would have needed the life steal. Okay, he could also use a Vile Spine, but that seems pretty unlikely. He would never, never really want the Vile Spine here. Alright, alright. I need to be careful about overreacting, but I do need to kill the Shaku. Shaku is so, so very dangerous. Because it gives him resources. But I don't like it when he has resources. I guess I can play a Stonehill Defender here. He has already spent one of the captains. Picking up another Void Walker could help me if I can find cooldown at some point. Faceless Shambler could also be okay. But probably too greedy. Because I'm going with the Void Walker here. But this then I'll just slam down a mixture of mixtures over there. Next turn he can play Bone Mare. So I would need to clear after this turn. Oh, such an unfortunate thing that he had the second captain. I mean, it was very unlikely for him to have both captains already. One captain, sure. I believe you have one captain, but having two captains in his opening hand... That's pretty... rough. So, next turn there will be a Bone Mare. I don't have enough mana to play Dreadlord into Drain Soul, which would be so sweet. But I don't have the mana to do that. Which means that I will be forced to play Hellfire. And then I will have two more mana remaining. I think I will need to use that to play a couple of Void Walkers instead of playing a, instead of playing tap instead of tapping. That Boomer is just such a big deal. I have to try to avoid it for now. play the Void Walkers. I mean, I need to find the Gul'dan. And some demons. Okay, and a Wild Spine Slayer to remove them both. Yeah. 4-5 Wild Spine Slayer is not a bad bone net target. It becomes an 8-9. And that's a real challenge for me next turn. So I will have to tap here. There's the Enforcer, but a little late. He's unlikely to have another Bile Spine. If he has, he can't use it with Bone Mare. This, this is going to have 9 health. Bloodworm can put it back down to 5. But I don't have way to kill it from there. I don't have the mana. Enforcer drain so costs 9 and I only have 8 next turn. I don't have a way to answer the bone mare. What if I play the despicable red lord? This one goes down to 4. It will be at it will be at 8 8. I guess I need this one. I guess I need this one more than I need the blood worm. But this is definitely going to be a Bone Mare turn. I don't think he would play this if he didn't have a Bone Mare. He had a Siphon Soul. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Is he going to have Lethal next turn? That's five. He has been holding on to his cards. Let's say there's a buffed Leroy. Which would be 14, 13. 
13 plus 5. 18 is the best he can do in ideal circumstances. So I'll play a blood worm. And I will play a drain soul on that. And I'm at 19. And 18. Well, he's going to get the third card, so maybe there's a way for him to do more than 18. He picked up a shadow step. That was a really good pick. That was a really high quality pick right there. That was a really good one. What can you say? That was just a really good one. I have to put a minion on the board, even though then I risk that this is going to be a Leroy. I'll go down to 9. I don't have taunts. He hits me in the face. Leroy is 7. He kills me the following turn. But if I just play Twisting, then that's not going to do anything for me either. And there's always the chance of a Bone Mare top deck. So I have to do this anyway. Now I just have to top deck a Taunt or a Gulden or something. Because unless one of these is Leroy and the other is Cold Blood, he cannot kill me this turn. But if that's a buffed Leroy, I've lost track whether that's a buffed card or not. But if it's a buffed Leroy, he can kill me with that uh, next turn. Not if I Siphon Soul though. So I need to Siphon Soul. And hit him in the face. I really have a read that that's a Leroy, so the moment he top decks Cold Blood, he wins. I have to take away Cold Bloods from his deck. So it cannot be Leroy because there was a Cold Blood in hand. Because if he had Leroy Cold Blood last, then he would have had lethal. Interesting times, but he can top deck Leroy. That could also be a shadow step, right? Yeah, it can be a shadow step. I'm too of lethal right now. Platform time. Then, the decision. He needs 8 from hand. He needs Leroy and Shadow Step. Leroy and Shadow Step is literally the only way for him to win this game. There's no other play that kills him 8 from hand. South Sea deck hand into Bone Mare is just 7 from hand. That would be one off. There are no cold boots because of the Skulking Geist. I think I need some early board clear spells. But there's the Zealot. There's another Zealot. Which means that Corpse Takers won't have Divine Shield. I need to find the Defiles. I have double Zealot, I need a Defile. All of this is nice but it's way way too slow in this matchup so basically i have three useless cards in my hand right now then i have two cards that require combo to work and then i have one pretty small card but if i can pick up one defile this game can look completely different all i need is to pick up one defile i have to tap for that He still has the coin, so he can play Bloodlust on 4, if he really wants to go wide, and he looks like he does. And Bloodlust on 4 with this board would be 19 damage, and I'm 21. But I can top deck or defile, but I don't. I mean, I can play something like Tainted Zealot, Drain Soul. 
This really looks like he wants to go in Bloodlust on 5. I mean on 4. This play really, really looks like that. Stonehill Defender will help me survive that. Is there a world in which I play a Twilight Geomancer next turn? Possibly. I mean, I would have picked a 1 mana taunt if I was offered one. I'm really scared of coin blood last this turn. But I, w I just couldn't find the cards to beat it. See? I told you. So I need the Twilight Geomancer here. Oops, I broke it and I need to drain soul one of the minions. So now another Bloodlust is one off. That's not a big consolation. Because obviously this doesn't look good. It's unlikely for me to recover from this. I mean, if I Siphon Soul next turn, that just kills one single minion. I can pick up a Defile. Yeah, Defile top deck is pretty much my chance. I pretty much have the read that he has another Bloodlust in hand. If he doesn't, I can Siphon Soul the Flame Tongue Totem. He will have 3 on board and I will be at 11. If there's no second Bloodlust, then that means that I survive. If I tap and don't find Defile, I always die. I can live through a Jade Lightning if I Siphon Soul. Tapping into Defile, it's around 10%. I guess the probabilities say that I need to siphon soul the flame and totem. Because the probability that he does not have a second bloodlust is greater than the probability that I tap into a defile, which is just 10%. It's bigger than the 10% chance that he hasn't found two bloodlusts in the top 10. Well, that's my Defile. So I can silence the Aya and play Defile. And there's one, two and three health minions on the board, so everything dies. If I don't silence the Aya, he will have a 2-2 two, two on the board. Actually, 2-1 on the board. And that can then kill me together with something like Flame Tongue Totem of Jade Lightning. It's silence on the Aya, and then Defile. Okay, but can I somehow survive another two turns? That's very unlikely. Now I will have to Siphon Soul the thing from below. But then he already has six, five on board. If I play this one, it doesn't have Divine Shield, and he could have a Devolve. I don't see myself surviving another two turns. I need to Siphon Soul this, so I get to 9. And that's 5, so I'm dead to... I'm dead to Jade Lightning now. Too bad, I made all the correct reads and I made all the plays I could, but... Jade Lightning, Bloodlust, Flame Tongue Totem are all lethal now. I believe there's going to be a Jade Lightning in his hand. The way he has played looks like there's a Jade Lightning. But maybe there isn't. There isn't. But those are still too much, right? This is going to deal 2 damage to a random enemy. So if I play Mister of Mixtures into Abyssal Enforcer, I will go to 5. 
And he has two on board. I don't know what that card is. It could be Troll. If I play Corpse Taker, I'm dead if he has Devolve. That could be a Devolve. Mistress in the Enforcer is my best chance. Going to fight, keeping this one alive so that the two damage can land on there and not to my face. It landed on my face, one in three chance. Now he has a single point of damage from hand, I'm dead. I think this is probably a devolve. One in three for that damage to land on my face. One in three. Well, it would only remove Jade Claws as an out. But removing Jade Claws as an out is still something. I haven't even had any demons yet. No, there's not going to be any demons from Gul'dan. He's going to value trade the 1 4 into the 1 1. So now I have the defile. If I defile this board, everything dies. If I play Gul'dan, he will have two minions, I will be at six. Jade Lightning is lethal. Flame Tank Totem is lethal. Bloodlust is lethal. I will need to defile this board and play the Bloodworm. So I hit there. I defile. I hit there. This guy can go face. I play Defile. Jade Claws is lethal. I need to play the Corpse Taker. And I can also play the Zealot. So now only Jade Lightning is lethal. 2 out of 17. Even a charge minion from that is not lethal. I mean, one Void Walker is fine, but two Void Walkers. I probably need to find some AoE instead of having more, more Void Walkers. One is fine to get the initial hit, but after that, I need something more. Well, he could also, of course, be a Control Warlock. But he's not because he's using the coin. No Control Warlock would ever use the coin. Do I bump into the Prince? No, I don't think I need to. Sizik, I'm about to start playing this deck. Any tips on what I'm looking for and how to play it? What? He has a mortal coil in that build? What is going on? He also plays a port that's perfect for Defile. Well, any tips? Your win condition is to win with the Blood Reaver cooldown. Other than that, you have a bunch of healing you're trying to stabilize against aggro. Defile is a key card. Defile and Tainted Zealot combo is one of the most important combos. Try to try to work with that. And you need Geist against Jade Druid, and it's very good against Priest too and Shaman. But you don't mulligan for it against Shaman. You can keep it in mulligan against Druid and Priest. Some of the first ideas. This is a defile board every time. Councilman. That's annoying. I don't have a good answer to that. 
I cannot commit to the Zealot yet. Being a 2-6 is especially annoying. I would need, to, need for him to play a 2 health minion and a 5 health minion on the board, basically. There's the 5 health. That's a 3 healther. I needed a 2 health minion. This might be too rough. I mean, I can play the Despicable Dreadlord, but am I just dead? Because that's 10 damage. Plus one, f 2 for every minion he summons, so he can deal maybe like 4. I have to play the Dreadlord. The alternative was to play the Bloodworm. Because the Bloodworm would make it so that I could heal. But that doesn't guarantee a 2 health minion on the board. And I need a 2 health minion on the board for the Tainted Zealot. If I had Mister of Mixtures in hand, that would be perfect. But I can't assume to find anything. So he's going to phase for 16, and then if he has Doom Guard for next turn, that's lethal. At least assume he's going to phase for 16, because then he can kill me with a Doom Guard. Seems like one of the few plays that makes sense. Trading here is always incorrect. You want to set me low so that you can finish the game. Okay, he gave me a chance. I appreciate that. Thank you, mister. 2, 3... It's 2, 4, 5s. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. I really do. I can't tap here. I have to somehow survive against the Doom Guard or something. I need the Corpse Taker out there next turn to hopefully heal me a little. And the Stonehill Defender, this is good. Let's get two taunts out. Tarlurker is a great find. I need those. First I need this fellow with Divine Shield and Life Steal. Okay, we're potentially starting to stabilize. You are not the boss of me. He might soul fire this. If he soul fires that though. Do I even want to hit anything with this? There are so many options. I'm not a huge fan of attacking here, but if I attack here, I can Hellfire, and I can kill also the Imp, and deny Bone Mare. Then I will have 4 mana left over, which I cannot use for anything. So that's a little bit inconvenient. But I will be at 15 health. I will be at 12. There's also another path that I can take, which is to just play the taller current weight. I think I will try this path. But now I potentially give him card draw with the Malkazar Simp. Well, now I can just hit here and Hellfire. This will be fine. I hit here, I Hellfire. This guy can kill off the remainders of the Possessed Villager. And I can play a Bloodworm. I like this. I like this a lot more. This one's completely fine now. And then we Hellfire. Then we kill the remaining minion. And then we play a Bloodworm. And next turn I have the opportunity to play Gul'dan. Which will give me, what, a Void Walker. And a Despicable Red Lord. And I have some life steal on the board. Alright. 
We're so rocking this. Well, I also have the opportunity to siphon soul the despicable dread lord. But there's no real reason for me to do that. It's good and every time here. Get to 17. Punch the opponent in the face a little bit. I mean, he can also play Gul'dan. But I have two Twisting Nethers. So unless he can kill me with charge damage, I don't really care about his Gul'dan. Did he just... No, he didn't just kill himself. No, not quite. Is this a board that's worth playing Twisting Nether on? I mean, I could push 9 to face. Put him down to 6 and play Twisting Nether. But he's also healing for 3 each turn. Hmm, how is this going to turn out? This is interesting, actually. Maybe I don't Twisting Nether. What if I Siphon Soul the Dread Lord? Maybe I do that. This is getting interesting. Let's siphon all this dread lord. Trade here. I guess I'll siphon this one. It face with these. They tainted zealot. I could have also fully cleared this board though. I didn't have to leave him. That turn probably was incorrect. I could have sacrificed the Tarlurker to get a full clear. That was better. Now I left him with a Bone Mare target. Yeah. Sacrificing Tarlurker was right, correct here. To get a full board clear. This was slightly incorrect. <clears throat> bone Mare is to punish. I mean, I also have the option to just try to fight fight it out until fatigue. Oh, Dreadlord is also really good punish. Oh dear. That turned out quite badly for me in the end. I do have to twist in the other board. Yeah, I should have should have cleared fully. It was incorrect not to. I kind of want him to draw more cards. And I'm happy if he draws more cards. Skulking Geist, Drain Soul, Hero Power on the Captain. I believe that's the play. I still have both Mortal Coils in my deck. He might also have a mortal coil in his deck. I think I'm cool with that. And that was also soul fire. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's kill the captain. I can leave the imp. It's fine. Imp and hero power doesn't kill the geist. He has five cards remaining. I'm mulligan for aggro druid. I've seen enough aggro druids tonight that I don't mulligan for jades. If it turns out to be a jade druid then I might be in trouble. But my hero power might be able to carry if I can find the right cards with that. Even if the mulligan is not correct. This has got to be Jade Druid because he didn't play anything yet and he's on the coin. So he co coins Blossom now. Why would you set up Doomseer? 
Well, it is a jade druid. It could, I guess it could be something like a big druid. Helen <laughs> Morrison guess that just shows how overpowered rogue deck is. I don't know. I just don't know. I need to get some board presence now. The druid is not going to stay doing nothing for too long. Talak or Sogot. I guess I'll go for the Sogot line. Let's see. Why do you draw with Nourish? Why do you need cards? You had so many cards, I I thought you would be ramping. Nine cards in hand. Okay. Damn, that's a bad hand. Or at least a hand that I cannot actually do anything with. But I can silence Aya. Ha 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 ha. He's going to play Jade Idol. Yeah. So I still need the Skull King Geist. I haven't been able to find that. I can't win the game without the Geist, but I'm not sure how to win the game anyway. But I think I will silence the Aya. Then I can play a Drain Soul. Let's silence the Aya first. I guess I will do it like this. The minions various health totals up. Okay, so now we've dealt with one Jade, but unless I can find the Geist, he can just play infinite jades. So I have to find the geist. That is still the only way. One tree. No two health. Well, I could play the defile. Deals one, deals two. Into the despicable dreadlord. That doesn't let me tap. That does give me a board. But no tap, I really wanted to tap. Here's all the rat, all the swipe, everything remaining. Mm -hmm. I need to tap. I need to find some better answers. I can trade here. And I can play the Despicable Dreadlord. It will kill this one and lead this to two health. I mean, now he has a couple of options to kill this, but if he uses a Wrath for 3 on this, then that's generally just bad. He can't play Malfurion into Hero Power. He could obviously swipe, but he could swipe Hero Power, for example, anytime he chooses anyway. He's running Feral Rage. You don't see that a lot. Then the Zealot would be such a clean, clean clear here, but... I need to find the Geist. Hellfire into Mortal Coil, I believe. I continue searching for the Geist. I need the Geist. Nine cards in hand. I can tap into Void Walker. I need to find the Geist. I mean, I have the other pieces, but I need the Geist. Without the Geist, once he starts Rolling with the Jade Idols. I'm just gone. 13 cards left. I mean, I have a bunch of removal here. There's also the possibility that he can just out-tempo me. Right now it looks pretty good. But th there's still the point that he hasn't used any swipes yet, so stuff like Corpse Taker is not going to stick around and heal me. In reality. He doesn't care about burning some cards, right? Or does he? He's going to burn a card. I just don't know what that was all about. Well, I have the option to play Sogot. 
I have the option to play Abyssal Enforcer. Drain Soul Abyssal Enforcer kills the Ghoul and Festa. Still a good setup for multiple things. Like Blood River Ghoul Dan. I think I do that. Yeah. Let's drain soul. This guy's going face. I drop the enforcer. <laughs> he burned a doomsayer and a mire keeper. Two of the most insignificant cards he could burn. That was pretty sweet. Those were cards that did, really didn't matter. The Despicable Dread Dreadlord coming and a couple of Void Walkers if I play Gul'dan now. Then I can't tap anymore to look for the Geist. Man, this is tricky. This is so very tricky. But JH are only 5-5s five for now, so it's a bit early to twist thing nether. He still has both swipes there. I mean, an alternative is to siphon soul and tap. This is difficult. I have to tap. I have to find the Geist. I siphon soul to 5, 5 and trade there. I'll at least get this one back from Gul'dan. Yeah, he gets the Jade Elders rolling here. That's bad. So that's 12 damage. I get a couple of 1 trees. And a 6-6. Six, six. 9 cards in the deck. If I get those one trees, if he plays double swipe, then he can push something like nine. Nine plus eight. Nine plus eight would be seventeen. That's almost enough. I have to play the golden now. I, I simply cannot afford I simply cannot afford to try to look for the Geist anymore. I have to try with this, otherwise I'm just going to die here. And I might still die here. It depends so heavily on what, what is his commitment this turn. Double swipe would be the worst possible case. Double swipe and just really go for the face. <laughs> he has the double swipe. Well, that was the worst possible case, as I mentioned. But if he's not fully committed to hitting face, then it's okay. Then it's still okay. Because I can defile now. Yeah, well, actually, this is fine. This is fine. Defile, kill one, another. Kill with the hero power, boom, play a corpse taker, it still has divine shield and life steal. I still have to find the Geist before he gets too many jades, but I have double twisting nether. So, he has played three jade idols so far. That's mm, a nice silence. That's the fourth Jade Idol. Four Jade Idols is not too bad yet. I don't even have to use a Siphon Soul here. I can hit there. Hero Power and Mortal Coil. To look for the Geist again. Seven cards in the deck. 
Both swipes are gone. There's one ultimate infestation for direct damage left. Alright. Let's see what I can find with the mortal coil. I find a stone hill defender. That's not quite what I was looking for, but I'll still play that one too. Seven I chain gang to get a couple of taunts up. Mm, that sounds like a plan. Drop another corpse taker. Again have divine shield and well it doesn't have taunt anymore. Yeah, that was my last taunt minion. So I needed to play this before I played the mortal coil. I made a small mistake. There was a 1 in 7 chance that this one loses taunt. Okay. Yeah. I didn't keep track of my taunt minions properly. That's a bit of a bummer. Geist is in the bottom 6. He has played 4 Jade Idols so far. 4. He's running Primordial Drake. I did not expect that to happen. <coughs> we got it. This should be game right. Destroyed the final Jade Idol. I can put a couple of thorns on the board. Okay. I have two Twisting Nethers and I have a Siphon Soul left. This should be game. How many Jades does he have left? I mean, he has a Jade Blossom or Jade Spirit. He has Blossom and Spirit left. He has two more Jades, and he has an Ultimate Infestation. I could Siphon Soul the Jade. So many ways. Siphon Soul is probably fine. So many bloody decisions. Let's Siphon Soul the Aid Aid. It's probably fine. Has, he doesn't have any brats left. So I'll kill that one. He has Malfurion, obviously. There's still Malfurion, there's Spreading Plague, and there are two more Jade. Two more Jade cards. That's one of them. And there's one Jade left after that one. This one is probably in preparation for a Malfurion play. But I can just twist thing at this board, right? Then he will have one more Jade left. I can see. So I don't have great expectations going into this matchup. If it's Secret Mage, it's absolutely disastrous. But any slower Mage build is generally also able to win. So now we are in an extremely low expectations matchup, but let's see what we can make out of it. Well, this is a disaster. With the apprentice. I'm going to have to coin out a Corpse Taker next turn and hope the Corpse Takers can carry. It's unlikely. But there's some kind of chance for that. It looks like a Secret Mage because he played this. Yeah. Now actually if I play Corpse Taker into this and that's an entity. That's disastrous, so I have to play the Stonehill Defender instead. I can pick up some Void Walkers to play into his entities. So that's a counter spell. If he has a Medius Valet in hand, 
I have to proc the counter spell. I can't leave it up. I can't leave him with the Medius Valet. Of course, even now. Yeah, so this Secret Mage, which is the worst, possibly the worst matchup for a Warlock like this. And man. But now he's all out of mana, so he sacrificed the Apprentice in order to draw cards. That's the best news I've uh, had today. It's not actually great news, but it's the, still the best I have had today. Because now I get to set up a Divine Shield to Taunt Minion. One counter spell is gone. Cabal Courier. Okay, it's not the fast Secret Mage. So now I'm not sure what the other... I'm actually not sure what the other secrets are going to be. Now they can be anything. Now this is getting tricky. Do I want to tap against a slower mage build? If I tap I can't really play anything on the board. I guess I do need to find some resources. Okay, that's fine. Only a fool rejects the lich king. Chill out. Okay, let's go with this line. But now I don't really know what kind of mage this is because he's running Cabal Courier, but he's also running Sorcerer's Apprentice. So it can still be some kind of a secret mage. But this can now be an ice block and end with your counter spell. Anything is possible. Truly anything is possible. I guess I should open with the Void Walker. First playing the Void Walker. Check for entity. Now it can be a counter spell or maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. I think I'm going to go with the corpse taker here. I'll run that one over there. And I keep this one around. It was a barrier. Okay, I didn't see that coming. I could have checked for the barrier. Because I had a potential defile clear here. Now he might have a AoE. Okay, so some kind of slower mage build. But maybe it was good that I didn't go for Defile here, because now he's jamming all sorts of small stuff. <laughs> That's a lot of Cabal Couriers. That's three Cabal Couriers in this game, and two Babbling Books. So he's definitely creating some resources here. I guess I can just jam the Abyssal Enforcer, right? Yeah, that's right. Let's kill all of those small minions. I still get to keep the Zealot for now. But he has a lot of resources there, because he has three Cabal Courier cards, so he can have cards from so many classes. <laughs> that's from Cabal Courier, that's from Babbling Book. I don't even know where the secret is from anymore. Who knows about these things, really? I have quite a few, few ways to kill the Radiant Elemental. Defile is the most probable one. So I just play a Void Walker to check for an entity. Not an entity. I hit face with this one. Check for barrier. Not a barrier. Then I will try to play the defile. To wipe that board. Not a counter spell either. Then I can drop a blood worm here. He may or may not have a violence portal for it. Who knows? I mean, he has like three random cards in hand right now plus cards from his deck, so it's truly impossible to say what he has there. Is 
It's probably a Hellfire turn. It's Hellfire and Mistress. So, a couple of Void Walkers have died and an Abyssal Enforcer. Not a whole lot of demons in the top half of my deck. But I still have to play Gul'dan. He's probably playing Jaina in a deck like this. Abyssal didn't die. No, it was polymorphed. You're right. You're right, it didn't even die. Oh, well, that's annoying. I still need to play the Gul'dan, I believe. I have a bunch of removal here. I mean, he probably has Flame Strike Meteor. That wasn't very strong now, was it? So, multiple options. I could Twisting Net at this board. I could play Siphon Soul. I could play Siphon Soul, Drain, Drain Soul, Hero Power. So many bloody decisions. I think that feels pretty fine. What if he has more counter spells in the deck, though? It's unlikely for him to have more counter spells in the deck. So drain soul here. And trade there. Hero power here and trade there. So Alex Traza is gone now and I'm still at 28. But the thing is that he's going to have Jaina in that deck 100 percent And that's a pretty tough one as well. Taking that 7 damage is not a lot of fun. I can't play the Twisting Nether yet, though. I have to save it for a while. I can probably play the Skull King Geist here. I'll take away one Mortal Coil from my deck. That's probably acceptable. And then start, start hitting that one a little bit. We'll see what the end result will be. He already used one Natiash charge. Oh, I have more Siphon Souls. But if I Siphon Soul this one... <laughs> then it will kill the Skulking Geist. That's a pretty good one. Pretty good one from the Cabal Courier. I don't want to play Twisting Nether when there's still two charges left in the Atiyash. What if I play Defile? What if I hit here? This one goes down to four. Then I play Tainted Seven and Defile. Because this one goes down to two. So this is a board clear. Alright, that was board clear. Got rid of the Medivh, got rid of the Obsidian statue, still two charges of Atiyash. But I have a Twisting Nether. He wants to go for a burn plan. And that is, that is Atiyash spent. So here I'm going to Twisting Nether that board. And hit him in the face again. I get up to 17. Fireballs are now gone. He still has frost bolts left. Alex Traza has been spent. Fireballs have been spent. There could be an Antonidas. Well, there can, I guess there can be a Pyroblast from Glyph. That seems like a pretty good card to have. I don't have the mana to Siphon Soul. If he has a Pyroblast in hand, then he wins because he got that Pyroblast from Glyph. Too bad. 
that's pretty unlucky considering that you only get pyro you only get direct damage from glyph less than half of the time much less getting 10 direct damage that was pretty nasty Do I need to play Mister of Mixtures and eat that to heal myself for seven? I probably do. My grows. Trust me. Probably do need to do this. Now I get to sixteen. Being at sixteen is slightly better. Oh, he also got a Casagus from a Cabal Courier. So yeah, these random effects are just. Just winning the game tonight. I still have a twisting nether there. So it's not all bad. I can eat the Kasakus. Let's see what kind of potion he got. The potion is going to be immensely important. This will be so important. Deal 8 damage and three demons to the hand. Okay. I'm cool with that, I'm cool with that. Let's keep... I don't need to heal to 15 now, do I? With both fireballs gone, I don't think I do. There's frost bolts left and the fire lamps portal. That's the Jaina. Jaina can be tricky. There's a twisting nether for me. I can play Abyssal and kill this. He's going to have double polymorph in the deck, most likely. So he can make new so ones. Many bloody decisions. And he has those three demons. But it's like, what am I going to do? I think I need to try. Eat away that one. I'm almost out of cards. He's fairly likely to be able to make another one. Another water elemental. But there's a chance that this one survives and then with drain soul and hero power I might get something done. Well, 4 damage is not quite what you're looking for now, is it? I can tell you it is not. I'm almost out of cards. So, but next turn he can kill this for a water elemental. I can trade this fellow away, I can play a Despicable Dread Lord. He has another Frostbolt left, so he can Frostbolt... As long as he has this one, he can Frostbolt and ping so the Despicable Dread Lord. One card left, he has one card left. He probably has Gedon as well. And he has those three demons that he got from the Kasakus potion. I could silence this one. This is pretty tricky. I'm probably doing it like this. He can only turn one of these into a water elemental in a single turn. So he can ping the 6 one, but that means that the 4 or 5 is not going to die, or if it's going to die, he's going to use something like a violence portal on it. Which means that I can then play a twisting nether. And follow that up with the ping to his face. And then I, he has three demons in hand. He may or may not have a Gideon. Oh, he got a Doom God. That was a big one. That was a pretty big one. Putting me down to ten. So now I will need to 
siphon so that do I need to drain a soul first to get the life steal? This might not be a minion. Or it can be a Geddon. It's a demon. I know it's a minion, it's the final demon that he has. So then I don't drain soul. Then I need to siphon soul. And hit face. There's one more demon left. What is the demon? Can I deal with it? Did he play the third demon already? There was Doom Guard. I can't remember. Oh, this was Zeros of an Imp. Okay. Well then, yeah. Well then, that's an ice block. Right. And then I win the game. Hmm, sorry, I was a little bit confused. But then that's a nice plot and then I win. Not bad. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.